Welcome back. This is part three of the Godot top-down tank battle game. And in this installment, we're going to be making an enemy tank and setting it up to patrol around the map and aim its cannon at the player. Okay, to get started, I have made an enemy tank scene. This is another inherited scene from the basic tank. So I've added that and I've decided to use red for the tank's color. And then I've got the turret here that I've chosen from the sprite sheet. Now the way we want the enemy tanks to move can vary, but to start with, if we go over here to the map, I'm going to set them up to just uh, patrol around. Like for example, I might have it go along this little rectangular path here. So I want it to drive along the road. And to do that, we're going to use Path 2D. And we'll be able to set up and draw as many Path 2Ds as we like on the map, and then attach enemy tanks to them so they can follow them. So let's zoom in here and look at the location where I want to draw the path up close. So I want it to go around this path. Now I'm going to add a node 2D container that's going to be paths, just to hold these all under there and keep them organized. Uh, main reason is because I'm going to draw a lot of them. I don't want my node list to get too long. I can collapse that list if I want. And I'm going to add a path 2D. Now drawing a path 2D, hopefully you've done this before if you've done any of the other Godot tutorials. I put a path 2D in the beginner tutorial. Uh, if you click on the plus, you click and start placing your points. Now one thing I noticed when I was playing around with this is the light blue color that's used to draw the path is really hard to see against this road and grass background. And it actually isn't something that's adjustable. I went and hunted around for that too. It's hard coded in the Godot source code at the moment. So, uh, so what we can do is on the ground, I'm going to temporarily go down to the visibility and I'm going to darken it just so that it'll be easier to see my path when I draw it. So let's say I want it to start here and I want to go to this corner. I want to go to here, to here, to here, here, and then I'll click the close curve. And now I have a path going around this little area that my enemy tank can just patrol on. All right, let's go over to our enemy tank and we're going to add a script that extends the tank script again. And for that, once again, we need to override the control method. So we're going to control and that's going to be where we put our code for controlling the tank. Again, I might want to do some other ways of enemy tanks moving. So they might not always be, they might not be always attached to a path follow 2D. So I'm going to say, uh, we're going to get the parent so that we can test to see if it's a path follow which I just remembered we need to add over here on our map. Our path 2D needs a path follow 2D child. There we go. Now back over on our enemy tank. So if parent is path follow 2D. So if the tank detects that it is attached to a path follow, then it's going to do the path follow code. And to follow a path, you just have to set the offset of the path follow. So parent set offset. And then we want to get parent.get offset. We want to get the current offset and add whatever the speed times delta is. And then I'm going to have an else in here where we say other, we, we're going to put other movement code if the tank is doing another kind of movement. 
So let's see what that looks like. I've set the enemy tank speed to 150. So if I go over here to my map and I stick an enemy tank as a child of the path follow, there it is. Let's put our let's put our grounds visibility back up again. And let's see what it looks like. Where oh I just remembered we started over here where we can't see our enemy tank driving. So we need to get over here to where we drew him. There he is. So he's driving along the path. Now, of course, one problem we have is that these corners are very sudden and it's going to make these really sharp turns, which don't look particularly attractive. I don't like the 90 degree snap there. So I want to make it look a little bit more natural. So we're going to alter the path a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to redraw my path here. So instead of starting at the corner, I'm going to actually start right there. And I'm going to go short of the corners and do a diagonal across the corner like that whenever I have a a corner that I want to go through. I'm going to go across there, there, and to there and close that. So now what the path looks like is that. And actually, I got an extra one in there. Delete. Yeah. Okay. So now I have it going around, and that's going to look better, but it's still not going to be exactly what I want. Actually, I'll show you what it looks like now, real quick. We'll go in here and run the scene just so you can see. Oops, I hid the enemy tank. So now when it reaches those corners, it's going to turn, right? And that's a little bit better. Still not exactly perfect. Right? And so the way we're going to improve that even more is by using the path to these control points. So this button right here will let you select the control points. And what control points on a curve do is let you round the path. So see, as I pull out there, or if I pull out in this direction, I can round it here. And so I can take these control points and I can, oops, I can, wrong side, and I can round the edges so that these sharp corners will be a little more smooth. And the tank will look a little more natural moving along these paths. So I'll finish that up and then show you the end result. All right, here's my nice rounded smooth path that kind of follows the center line of the road. And now when I run it, my tank's movement is going to look a lot nicer when it takes those turns. All right. Now, the other thing we have, though, other problem we have, though, is this: these tanks are both kinematic bodies. And so when that tank is moving, if I get in front of it, it can't really go, right? But now what happens is it's still trying to follow the path. So it has now become offset from the path. And it's still trying to follow it. And that is going to be a big problem. It looks very weird. So we want to make sure that the path follow 2D, which is the thing that's moving around the path, and the enemy tank keep the same position. We want the enemy tank to keep on the path follow. So we need to make sure and set our position to 0, 0, right, which is relative to the parent, all the time. Okay, And what that's going to do 
is if we get in the way of the tank, I'll get over here and get in front of it again. Right, it's going to push me out of the way, which is a nice side effect, but it's also going to remain locked to that path follow. Okay, and for a first version of the tank collision, that is good enough for me right now. Now the other thing I want this enemy tank to be able to do is shoot at the player. So I need it to be able to turn its turret and point it at the player and shoot. But I also don't want the enemy to have you know infinite range. So we're also going to add a visibility ring around the enemy tank so that it can only it only shoots at the player when the player is close enough to be seen. So on the enemy tank, we're going to add an area 2D. And this area 2D, I'm going to call the detect radius. And that is going to have a collision to shape 2D of a circle. And we pull that out. And we can make that whatever size we want. Actually, I think we'll probably make it a variable so we can make different enemy tanks have different sized um, detect radiuses, but that'll be what it looks like. And then we're just going to detect if the player is inside of this circle, it will be shot at. So in the tank script, we're going to add a couple more variables. We're going to add uh, a float for turret speed, because I want to control how quickly that turret can rotate to turn and point at the player. If it's slow, then the player has a chance to, you know, navigate around behind the tank and, and keep from getting fired at if it can stay away from the aim of the turret. And then we're also going to have a radius for the detect rate, for the detect, uh, so that we can insert whatever we want there. So we want to take this variable, whatever this one is, and let's let's set it so we have a default value uh, to say 200. Turret speed, I'm going to make it 1. We'll see how that goes. So I want it to take this value and set the collision shape's radius to that. And I want to do that at runtime, so I'm going to put that in the ready. And I want to get the collision shape, it's shape dot radius, and set that equal to detect radius. And if we turn on visible collision shapes, that should let us go over here and see when we run it that we have our detect radius. And that's a little bit on the low side. I'm going to actually, we can leave 200 as the default but I'll double it on this guy so that we have, yeah, that's better. So anytime you're inside of that circle, that's when we want this turret to turn to point at you. But I don't want it to just snap to instantly pointing at you like ours is doing with the mouse, right? If it goes across, it just instantly rotates 180 degrees. I want it to have a maximum speed that it can turn and point towards you. So in my enemy tank, I'm going to connect the detect radius's body entered and body exited signals. It's body entered and body exited. All right, and so both of these will detect when a body enters or not. Now on body entered, we're going to say if body is the player. So if it's the player that entered, then we're going to set target to the body. So now we know what node we are following. And then when the body exits, now this could be any body exiting. So if body equals target, target equals null. So we want to drop the target if the target leaves the area. So now we have our target. We've acquired our target. 
when it's inside the circle. Now we need to aim towards it. All right, and so we can use the process function for this. We're going to, if there's a target, we're going to aim the turret. So first we need to know what's the direction to the target. What's our direction vector pointing towards the target? Well, that's target dot global position minus our global position dot normalized. And then what is the current direction? Well, the, I want a direction vector for what direction the turret is currently pointing. Well, that's a unit vector rotated by whatever the rotation is. Actually, the turrets. Global rotation. We want what it is pointing to in world space, not in body space. And so the angle that we want to set our turret to is going to be a linear interpolation between those two directions. And so we can say turret global rotation is equal to current direction. So we want to start with the current direction, use linear interpolate. to the target direction. And the amount we want to go is by whatever turret speed times delta is. And then we want to take the angle of that, because that, that will return a vector. And so we want to take the angle of that vector. And that's what our global rotation will be. Kind of a long line, but there you go. So let's run this on the map and see what happens when the tank sees. Okay, see the tank's turret is not moving, but now it is. Now if I get over here, see how it's turning to point towards me? Let's try this from an angle where it's not pointing towards me. All right, so as I go around, it's pointing at me, it's pointing at me. I'm only a little bit faster than this tank, but see how it's can't quite rotate fast enough to keep up with me if I'm on the opposite side like this. It rotates around. All right. And so we can change that turret speed to adjust that later. Okay. I'm going to turn off the collision shapes so we can see it more naturally. Okay, so that's working pretty well. So now we have our enemy tank. It patrols around. It can aim towards us, and we can aim towards it. So I think you can guess what the next part is going to be about. We're going to add some shells to fire out of our cannons. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.